Steve Bulzati is a paleontologist who is specialized in ancient times. He looks back millions of years into the past, into the evolution of dinosaurs and early birds. Developing methods for flying was a very delicate and ambitious task of nature. Of course, feathers are definitely not the only but the most obvious anatomic characteristics of birds nowadays. So I began my Skype talk with Steve at this point. The big question is, why did feathers develop in evolution? Can you give us some ideas? Because uh, it obviously was not because of flying around at the beginning. The very first feathers in the fossil record, they look nothing like the feathers of modern birds. They're very simple. They look almost like hair. They're just little strands. And so there's no way that those feathers could have helped an animal fly. They didn't form wings. So what those fe first feathers probably did was to provide insulation to help keep these dinosaurs warm, to control their body temperatures. And then only later on did those feathers start to get bigger and start to branch out and start to form wings, and then dinosaurs could start to fly. And in fact, we now think that the first wings that evolved in dinosaurs, the first times you had really big, long, flat feathers on the arms of a dinosaur, those things probably didn't evolve for flight either. They probably evolved first for display purposes as those advertising billboards stuck out of the arm. And then only later on did dinosaurs start to use those wings to fly. It was obviously a very ambitious task to bring all these uh, things together in one organism because all of them have been developed separately. Um, maybe this, that this is the reason it took so long to evolve this ability? Evolving flight is, is very difficult. It, only a few groups of animals have ever done it. And among animals with bones, it's only been birds, bats, And then the pterosaurs, you know, the pterodactyl-like uh, reptiles that live with dinosaurs. That's it, only three times in the whole history of life. And uh, that's just because you need a lot of things to change in your skeleton to allow you to fly. And this is something I've studied quite a bit, looking at how those changes evolved. And with birds, the pattern is, is really clear. These things didn't all evolve at once, but they change very slowly, gradually over time, over tens of millions of years, as this one particular group of dinosaurs got ever more bird-like. So some of the things that this dinosaur group needed to do, these are theropod dinosaurs, the meat eaters that evolved into birds. First of all, I mean, you have to get small. You can't be the size of a bus and fly around really easily in the air. Okay, if you're an airplane, you can, but as an animal, an actual, you know, living, breathing animal, you have to be fairly small to fly. You have to have a pretty light skeleton as well. So mm -hmm. the bones of birds are really hollowed out. Uh, you have to have lungs that are really efficient, that can get a lot of oxygen out of the air because flying is really expensive metabolically. Of course, you need some kind of wing, and you need a lot of other features. You need a big brain that can help control flight, you know, the, the computer that controls flight. Mm -hmm. uh, you need a certain type of metabolism and so on and so forth. And so those things didn't all change at once in dinosaurs, but they changed over time very gradually. And then at the end of it all, you had a small dinosaur with feathers, with wings, with really efficient lungs, with a big brain. And that animal was worthy of flying. It was able to fly. So what... Do we know about the question whether these early birds were warm-blooded or cold-blooded? They had pretty high metabolisms. Whether they were warm-blooded in the same way we are is hard to say because we can't just go back in time and stick a thermometer in a dinosaur. But what we do know is that they grew pretty fast. They had higher metabolisms than snakes and lizards and crocodiles. They were more similar to birds. And then at some point in dinosaurs, true warm-bloodedness did evolve because, of course, birds have it. So at some point in the dinosaur family tree, it did evolve. And it's just difficult to pinpoint that point on the tree from fossils. So we are going back 65 million years ago. And it was the time when the dinosaur species disappeared from this planet. And, well... The question is, why did these early birds survive? It's one of the biggest mysteries in all of science, and, and one of the things that got me very interested in dinosaurs when I was younger is that big question of why they died out. And we know now that they died out very quickly. 
about 66 million years ago, you, you have dinosaurs all over the world, and then they just disappear at the same time. And we know that that's the same time that an enormous asteroid hit the Earth, an asteroid that was about 10 kilometers in diameter. It hit with the impact of several billion nuclear bombs, a terrible time to be alive. And so that's why dinosaurs went extinct. But to be realistic, though, not all dinosaurs went extinct because birds evolved from dinosaurs. Birds are dinosaurs. And birds are around today. So a few dinosaurs did survive. And the ones that survived were the ones that were small and had feathers and had wings and could fly. Why exactly they survived? Uh, also really hard to say. We know now that not all birds survived. A lot of birds also died too because birds were around at that time. So a lot of the more primitive birds died out. And the only ones that lived were the more modern style birds, the ones that had really fast metabolisms, probably the ones that were fully warm-blooded, the ones that could fly really well, the ones that had lost all of their teeth and replaced them with the beak, the ones that didn't have tails anymore. And there's a few different ideas. Maybe they could grow faster. Maybe they were warmer-blooded. Maybe that helped them survive. Maybe they could fly better so they could move around easier in that chaos when environments were being destroyed mm -hmm. and there were fires and tidal waves and earthquakes. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it was as simple as the fact that they lost their teeth and they had beaks, and those beaks let them eat seeds really well, and seeds are things that survive. They survive forest fires, they survive drought, and they would have survived for many decades or even centuries after an asteroid impact. Mm -hmm. So essentially, seeds would have been a ready source of food for animals when little else was available. So maybe that's what did it. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't know for sure. Maybe it was a combination of those things. It's still mm -hmm. a little bit of a mystery. But what we do know is that birds did survive, and here they are, and there's 10,000 of them around today. At the end of, of our talk, I, I would like to get some more information about your opinion in computer simulation and the me method for research. Um, how important is that tool for you, uh, for instance, to add soft parts of the body like muscles? Or what do you learn by simulating the movement of the body by virtual um, simulations? So computers have revolutionized our entire lives. Of course, you know, here we are chatting over the Internet from a very long distance away in real time with great video. We all have our phones. Uh, you know, so computers have, have changed our whole world, and that's true of science as well, and even of paleontology. And I think, you know, a lot of people might think of paleontology as kind of an old science. You know, what we do, we go out to the desert and we dig up bones, and, and that's all the science is. Well, not really. That's only the first step, is getting the dinosaurs. Once we have the dinosaurs, then we have to study them. And nowadays, we use a whole lot of, of different types of technology, a whole lot of supercomputing technology. Uh, people do use technology to build digital models of dinosaurs to see how they might have moved. They use supercomputers to study their evolution, to build family trees, to look at trends in their evolution over time. One of the things that I do quite a bit is use uh, CAT scans, uh, high-powered x-rays, to look into the skulls of dinosaurs, to look into their brain cavities and their ears, and to see what sort of intelligence and sensory abilities they might have had. And that gives us a lot of insight into what they were like as living animals. And you can't get that information uh, unless you have scans of the skull like that. you got to see inside to where those organs were. And there's a lot of other examples, but really uh, the science today is much different than it used to be. It's moving very fast. There's always new technologies coming out, and you know, I, it just uh, makes me excited to think about what the next new technologies will be because things are changing so quickly, and the more things change, the more we learn about dinosaurs.